Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 144th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, as many of you know, on Monday, Apple held their annual Worldwide Developers Conference, more commonly referred to as WWDC. And during the event, Apple officials held a keynote presentation where they not only unveiled the next major installment to OSX, which is officially dubbed OSX Mavericks, but they also gave the public a first look at iOS 7. And among the many revisions and additions to iOS 7, Apple has added Control Center, which is a new way for users to control various settings. It's very similar to SB7 settings on jailbroken iDevices. They've also made some pretty significant changes to Notification Center, adding tabs in the drop-down menu for a better experience. They've also completely revamped multitasking, and not only the way that it looks, but the way that it actually functions. They've added AirDrop to iOS, which will allow individuals to share various files and images with each other over either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity, which is very similar to the existing AirDrop OS X feature. Now, aside from just those few changes in iOS 7, Apple is completely revised the mobile operating system. They've changed everything from the keyboard to the user interface to even the icons, which apparently will change significantly from one beta version to the next, and they should be completely different from the ones that will eventually be found in the public release coming this fall. Now, if you guys want additional details on iOS 7 and you want to see all of the major features demoed, then just be sure to check down below in the more info. I'll have a link to my video in which I highlight and demonstrate the changes in iOS 7. As I mentioned before, the next major version of OS X will be called called OS X Mavericks, and it will include changes and additions like iBooks, Maps for OS X, a new revised interface for Calendar, updates to the Safari application, iCloud Keychain, which will offer native one password like functionality for both OS X and iOS. It will also include better support for multiple displays, revisions to notifications, such as the ability to quick reply to certain notifications, tabs for Finder, the ability to tag different items and easily find them through the Finder window, as as well as advanced technologies for power users. All right, moving right into jailbreaking. As I've said in the past few episodes, the developers have planned on waiting until the public release of iOS 7 before pushing out the next major untethered jailbreak. Now, some of you were confused about this and thought that they would release an untethered jailbreak once Apple issued the first beta version of iOS 7 to developers. Again, that's not the case. They're going to wait until sometime after Apple releases iOS 7 and the next iPhone to the public, which should be sometime around this fall. And yesterday, following WWDC, Pod2G, famed hacker and contributor to the Evaders dev team, informed his followers via a quick tweet that he's updated his daily iPhone to the first version of 7.0. Now, as I'm sure the majority of you are already aware, when Apple issued iOS 6.1.3 to the public, they effectively closed a number of vulnerabilities that Evasion exploited to achieve an untethered jailbreak on iOS 6.0 through 6.1.2. And again, although the hackers on the iOS scene aren't planning planning on releasing a 6.1.3 jailbreak, they will develop tools for future versions of iOS 7. And with yesterday's news of Pod2G updating to iOS 7, the fact that the hacker will work on creating a new jailbreak utility is indisputable. After all, it was Pod2G himself who confirmed the Evader's plans to release an updated utility for an upcoming quote major release. And additionally, Posix Ninja, former leader of the Chronic dev team and prominent hacker, sent a rather interesting tweet to his followers, in which he stated the following, quote, Red Snow sucks, I wish someone would make something better. So previously, Posix Ninja stated his plans on developing a new boot ROM based jailbreak, which just so happens to be the same type of jailbreak Red Snow is. Now for those of you who are unaware, a boot ROM jailbreak takes advantage of a hardware exploit that's impossible for Apple to patch without releasing entirely new hardware, which is why the exploits found in Red Snow, namely the Lime Rain exploit, have survived since 2010. And without reading too much into it, POSIX Ninja's latest tweet may be an indication of what's to come for the future of jailbreaking, and if that's the case, it will certainly solidify the jailbreak community for years to come. Alright, and finally, finishing off the news with a rumor, according to a new report from Reuters, Apple is considering using significantly larger displays for future iPhone models, suggesting that the company is heavily testing 4.7-inch and 5.7-inch iPhone models that may launch next year. Currently, the newest iPhone, the iPhone 5, already features an enlarged 4-inch display over its predecessor's smaller 3.5-inch screens. Reuters also mentions Apple's supposed plans for later this year, proposing that the company will release a revamped iPhone 5S with built-in fingerprint sensor technology and the rumored lower-cost multicolored iPhone 
sometime in September. And furthermore, in a separate report, another blog helps to confirm the information by claiming that the cheaper iPhone will adopt a similar color scheme as the old iPhone 4 bumpers. Well, the iPhone 5S will be released in a gold model in addition to the traditional black and white variations, which strangely enough matches up with a leaked alleged gold iPhone 5S SIM tray. Of course though, just be sure to stay tuned to this series, my YouTube channel in general, and best tech info. I'll keep you guys completely covered on everything iPhone and jailbreak related. Now really quick, before we conclude, as for the giveaways, in the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, I told you guys that once that video had reached 3,000 comments, I would leave the code to a $100 Amazon gift card in the comments section. Well, it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon, so instead I'm gonna post the code on that video on Sunday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So just be sure to be on that video during that time and leave a comment to be entered. And once you see the code pop up on that video, simply go to Amazon and the first person to redeem that gift card will be the winner. As for my other giveaway though, if you still want to enter in to win a $100 Amazon gift card, just be sure to rate this video up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and also leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. If you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day. What size screen would you guys like to see future iPhone models adopt. Again, just be sure to let me know in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. And of course, don't forget to be updated more often. Just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.